like I'm shaped like a goblin, so it's like I got a really long extremities and then it's just a little belly. I gotta like fly in my shower like dolls every night. Yeah, it's just it's How bad it gets. I wish I knew how to quit. Uh, to this day, when I play the piano, it's kind of like when I play with women. I think about touching the black ones, but I never do. <laughs> I don't know what to do with them. They said in the film, Back to the Future, where are we going? We don't need roads. Odd Squad Pod. All right, we're live. Go forth to the gates of Ahala. <laughs> Dude, go Braves. That's good stuff. Who the fuck are the Braves? It doesn't matter. All right, cool. I just noticed you're wearing a Brave shirt, too. Yeah. Is that some fucking sports team or something? Uh, yeah. I want you to educate me on the... Wet and wild world of sports, real quick, because I'm I don't know anything about sports. I fucking I don't even play sports video games. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, what do you want to know? Tell me about tell me about uh, football, man. I know you got into football recently. I mean, I've been in football for a long time. <clears throat> I've been into football. I never played football, but uh, I'm too short. Did you play here? Oh, oh. Well, did you watch here in Al- in Alabama? Because I know you're from Min- Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, as a kid, uh, we would go to, like, Vikings games sometimes, uh, and then when we came down here, didn't really dig, uh, NFL that much. Okay. <clears throat> Just, my dad doesn't care for it, and I don't know, I guess when you're, when you're that age, if your dad doesn't like it, you're like, I don't like it either, or whatever, I guess. I, I just never could get into it, but the college football is pretty exciting. What is it about college football that's exciting? The college girls in the crowd. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> that's <laughs> hell one, yeah, dude. That's one thing, especially at FSU, dude. They've got it. They got it going on down there. Mm-mm. FSU, Florida State. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Seminoles, but uh, in Tallahassee. Okay. Like, there's notorious for having hot chicks. That's cool. That's cool, man. Uh, no, but uh, for real, it's uh, the if you're really into it, like the it, the environment is it's really exciting. Uh, a, a lot of my, I can hear the dog walking in the my, in the monitor. Jesus Christ! When I was when I was a kid, uh, we would go to Angels baseball games all the time. Oh yeah. Uh, I remember the excitement of it all. I couldn't tell you a thing about baseball. <laughs> At some point, I just checked out. I was like, oh, I don't know. It's too much of a drive. You got to deal with the yeah. crowds and <clears throat> lines and stuff. I'm a t- I was a tired kid. You know, it's like I'm gonna go home and sleep for sure. So, dude, if you don't go lay down somewhere, <laughs> hold on. Yeah, one second. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> it couldn't have, it could have asked for a better timing. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> What do we do? I uh, we just have to actually kill the dog, three, I guess. Three bullets <laughs> and four uh, antifreeze hot dogs, and she's still going. <laughs> Did you accidentally give your dog reanimator ser- uh, reanimator serum, bro? Um, maybe that's the recipe. <laughs> and the antifreeze hot dogs. Yeah, uh, we gotta specify gay antifreeze hot dogs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the gay hot dog recipe. <laughs> yeah. Damn, we're actually fulfilling a promise for once. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Two parts gay and two parts Just antifreeze. Ignore my retarded dog. <laughs> oh, my God, this is fantastic. Oh, Jesus. So, um, say you knew a guy who, uh, who, like, had to purchase a lot of Plan B. Wouldn't it be, like, really funny if that guy, like, died and went to heaven, right? Because he just, you know, he fucked a lot, and, like, he bought a lot of Plan B, and he died and went to heaven, 
And God's like, all right, now it's time for you to face all of your sins. And that includes all the murders you committed. And he's like, murders? I didn't commit any murders. And then all of a sudden, this army of, like, sentient fertilized eggs just comes in like, we love you, daddy. We love you, daddy. Why did you do this to us? We wanted to be born. They swarm in, like, the spiders from, like, Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> just all these little, like, orbs <laughs> that are essentially fertilized ah. eggs and, like, little halfway embryos and shit. Hell yeah. <laughs> Just a thought. <laughs> oh, wow. All right, so this has been a fun one so far. Yeah, yeah, we had to actually kill the dog this time. It yeah. was death by decapitation once and for all. That was it. We'll miss her, but not that much. Yeah, that's what you get for fucking with the Odd Squad crew. <laughs> Dude, it was like she was like, fuck your podcast, fuck your podcast. All I want to do is eat shit and sleep, and you guys are fucking it up with your podcast. <laughs> and also eat shit. <laughs> Dude. Fuck. You know what? If we don't guard her really well, she fucking, she likes to snack on the cat box like they're Snickers bars. That's why she's so crazy. Dude, uh, you know, for... She's toxoplasmosis. Oh, yeah. For as sophisticated a dog as uh, Diva is, she, uh, she loves digging cat turds out of the box, man. It's just like, bro, what the fuck's wrong with you? You know what outside means. You know what your meals are. Like, what? why is it that you feel a need to eat cat turds? You yeah. get fed a huge meal, and yeah. you get snacks. Like, what? Is, you little shit. Anyway. It makes me feel less bad about how uh, shitty their dog food is, because, like, you know how you get those feelings like, damn, dude. Uh, sorry. You get those, like, you start to think, like, damn, I feel bad that they gotta eat this fucking shitty food. But then they'll literally choose to eat a, a cat's turd. Like, maybe cat turds just taste good. Maybe, but I'm not willing to run that experiment and find out for myself. Maybe that's why they. T- maybe that's why the big gov started that toxoplasmosis <laughs> rumor. Like, no, 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 don't eat them. Because, like, who else was... Who was going to be, like... Like, who wasn't being careful around feces already? Yeah. Who needed that extra step? Like, cat feces, <clears throat> especially careful. I'm <laughs> like... If you're not washing your hands after picking up your dog shit, well, I don't know what to tell you. you know yeah, there's there's that whole that countries sense? that don't wash their hands, so it's like yeah, you don't want to be in that spot, bro. There's a lot of people who aren't poop conscious. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. being poop conscious is a really important part of uh, maintaining a healthy life. <laughs> I try to be as poop conscious as possible. Oh, God. <laughs> Shout out Jimbo for joining the page. Yeah, yeah. Our first Patreon member, Jimbo. Thanks a bunch, man. You rock. Let's get you on the pod soon, bro. Hell yeah. Um We appreciate it. Yeah. I noticed you have a Rubik's Cube there. I know I'm not I shouldn't be pointing out things that are in the room, but yeah, yeah. why is it only like a four by four? Oh, this is a two by two. Oh. Well yeah. that's even worse. Nah, dude. Uh they're actually pretty cool. Like uh I need that third row or my brain's not engaged the way it needs to be. <laughs> the third row? Yeah. Can you do it? Can I do it? Yeah, can you no, do it? No, I'm one? stupid. I, I can't oh, okay. do a Rubik's Cube. I'm, <laughs> I'm a yeah. simpleton. Dude, that's loud. You got, the al- you got the algorithm down, though? Don't talk to me about algorithm, dude. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm just, I'm just fucking genius, man. I didn't, I didn't, like, look this up online or anything. No, obviously not. As you, like, flicker through it like some kind of rain man. Oh, yeah. Just, like... Solving a solving the Hellraiser box. Wait till you see me do it for real, dude. Did I tell you Hellraiser is a Christmas movie? You did. I don't. I've never seen it. I have to be honest. You've never it. seen Hellraiser, man? No. Okay, so I got to tell you something kind of funny because uh, Hellraiser is kind of heralded as one of the you know one of the greatest horror movies of all time. Ta-da. Uh, it's got uh, the <laughs> Doug Bradley. You did solve the Rubik's cube. Yeah, I want to yeah. point out to the audience members <laughs> he did in fact solve the Rubik's he cube. He knows how bad I want people to know. Uh, so. <laughs> I I do want to point that out. He did solve the Rubik's cube. It is a simple two by two. So no, dude, <laughs> Don't um, quit fucking around. I'll go get a three by three right now. Nobody wants me to, but I will. We, they're just gonna hear clacking like the whole rest of the podcast. <laughs> yep, like, he did it. He did it. Anyway, uh, yeah. So Hellraiser was uh, was directed by the guy who actually wrote the book. It's based off of, and his name is Clive Barker. Clive Barker. Yeah. 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 Uh, He's gay. Yeah, he is. He is, but in a good way. A friend of mine in high school once said that dude knows how to write straight romance like no man, no gay man should know how to, which is really funny. Um, <laughs> so there's that. And 
the reason straight why he... Straight romance? Oh, I thought you meant like straight romance. Straight romance, bro. But you no. mean straight romance. I mean straight romance. I mean, b- well, you know... Well, you know what? It's probably just like re- gay romance, but not gay. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> that is a good point, yeah. He's like, what would I write about if I wasn't gay? Oh, he's British, so take it from the top. What would, what, what would I write about if I wasn't gay? <laughs> Bit Pro- gay in it, bruv. <laughs> Pro- probably tits in it. <laughs> Probably a couple of tits, eh? <laughs> Maybe I think about a con. The mates will be having a wank. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what? We can do British uh, British um, accent humor without uh, worrying about who we offend. That's true. That's probably the one accent we can do. That's right. At least my school's not a shooty zone. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when America was still owned by the Queen. Well, I love it, too, because, like, you got Australians who are just, like, retarded British people. <laughs> They're Red like, neck, oi, mate, necks. you got your squizzy dongo there, and you're about to take a flippy doodah. <laughs> oi, this guitar sounds a bit scuzzy, isn't it? <laughs> a bit scuzzy was he, isn't it, fam? <laughs> uh, I guess the in it's more of a British thing. Yeah, yeah. Don't it? I don't know what they say. <laughs> You do the ex- you do the Australian pretty good actually. Yeah, yeah, I've had a lot of practice. You know, you watch Mad Max and The Road Warrior enough times, and you just you pick it up. Oh man, you know what? We talked about uh, Australia a couple times, but we never talked about King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me let me finish my point about Hellraiser, and then we'll talk about. Oh, I forgot about that. King I'm Gizzard. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm ADD. So he was folks. Clive, Dar- Clive Barker was allowed to direct Hellraiser because one of his works had previously been adapted into a film. And it was called Rawhead Rex. Okay. You ever heard of Rawhead Rex? No. So, Rawhead Rex was a comic book before it was. I mean, a movie. I know about I know about like the books of blood and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it's from books of blood. If I'm not mistaken. Train. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Rawhead Rex is in there, and he's a he's basically like a like a a dick demon. <laughs> it's awesome, dude. Like way before the Japanese thought of it, like and Dickie Mouse. Yeah, like Dickie Mouse. There we go. Shout out Patreon, Dickie Mouse. You you guys will see it on there. Yeah, we got to put that up there for all of you guys who aren't on the Patreon. Get the fuck on there. What are you doing? Yeah, it's a club. It's a club, and you can join. Um, so, yeah, Rawhead Rex got adapted into a movie, but they made a really, really goofy-looking monster, dude. You should look it up sometime. It's fucking... Dude, look it up now. We'll get we'll oh, get yeah? your live reaction on the pod to Rawhead Rex. <laughs> Rawhead Rex, all right. Yeah. And the movie is, like, the first thing you see, so it, it'll, be, it'll be genuinely great. But, yeah, like, Cly- Clyde Barker was so pissed that they were, like, He's like, all right, next time you adapt one of my fucking movies, you're going to let me do it, cunts, and then let him do it. And that's, that's why like, we got Hellraiser. Yeah, it's like a reverse Stephen King. Yeah, essentially. Essentially where... Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, because okay. of The Shining. Yeah. Because they made The Shining, and he's like, this doesn't have anything to do with my fucking buck. Oh, dude, this looks fucking lit, dude. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, dude. I'll, Fuck yeah. I might watch that shit tonight. Dude, it's great, and it's free on YouTube, just saying. I was going to say, is Rawhead Rex, like, streaming somewhere? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. got it free on YouTube. It's probably on fucking Tubi as well. <laughs> Tubi has the good shit, man. I watched a film on there called Sergeant Kabuki Man NYPD. Dude. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Easily one of the most offensive movies I've ever seen in my life, but as a one-eighth Japanese person, I thought it rocked. Dude, shout out to this channel called uh, VHS Rips. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Rawhead Rex VHS Rips. Oh, is that is that the whole thing? I guess Up so. there on VHS Rips? Oh, yeah, Ooh, dude. You, you immediately went to some smooching, dude. Yeah, what the fuck? There's a little bit of titty in this movie, too. I know, it's fucking, I just, it's just, great. Hold on. What's that kid doing? He's squatting, dude. He's taking a shit. I'm not trying. Oh, my God. How many people are fucking making out of this movie? <laughs> Oh, this is... There he is, man! There's my head! <laughs> There's a scene where he straight up pisses on a priest, and the priest is, like, enjoying it. It's like a golden shower. It's fucking hilarious, bro. <laughs> Anyways, you gotta tell oh. me about King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. I mean, it's not really funny, but you I know you're, like, you dig, uh, like, a little bit heavier stuff. Yeah, yeah, I like a little bit of heavy shit. And one of my favorite metal albums of all time is their uh, 2019, uh, what was that? I think that was a Sneezing Dog. Oh, because in the in the, my headphones it sounded like a demon or something. Oh my god. It was like, ha! It's the ghost of your fucking decapitated dog coming <laughs> back. Like, <laughs> That's right, why is she sneezing? She's fucking dead. Yeah, she shouldn't be, it's that fucking reanimator serum, bro. <laughs> We shouldn't have put those in the gay hot dogs. <laughs> they turned all the 
fish gay. I don't know. Uh, I don't like them putting chemicals in the hot dogs to turn the friggin' dogs gay. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it. All right. Uh, no, dude. Uh, so they're, they, you can call it a gimmick if you want to, but one of their biggest things is that, I think I told you this before, but for the pod, uh, they're an Australian Melbourne, Melbourne, Melbourne based. Melbourne? Started out as like a surf rock slash psych rock band. Oh, that sounds sick, dude. Like uh, very punk skateboard stuff. I can uh, get into that. And um, what they did was they took their, uh, they have two, they have like three singers. The main guy's name is Stu uh, McKenzie. But then they got this guy named Ambrose Kenny Smith that was in another band called the Murlocs. And they stole a couple of their members and the other band continued. But then they, they became like, I guess, a, a local super group. And, but, so they've got, like, on one hand, they sound a bit like the OCs. Like, okay. With very psych rock stuff, like, but then they, they quickly did this thing where, uh, I guess they wanted to see how many times they could make a different album. Oh, hell yeah, dude. And. I love, I love bands that do that. Yeah, so, like, one will be, like, the, like, acoustic indie folk pop album, and then it's all acoustic or whatever, and then the next one is, Just like, a guy strumming a guitar, like... I love my life a no, lot, like, but I'm a drug addict yeah. and everything's okay. No, a lot of, uh, like, they go out of their way to go buy a bunch of real shit and incorporate them. And, like, they, they basically take every concept to the max. Okay. Like, they've got one album that's more of, like, a hard-hitting psych rock album called Nonagon Infinity. Dude, that sounds like some kind of eldritch god. That's fucking yeah. sick. Well, they talk about stuff like that in their music, too. And they talk about, like, environmentalism. But they also talk about, like... Dude, environmentalism like, Balrogs, gay. and they talk about... Balrogs like, aren't, though. It's crazy. They talk about cool shit. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds cool as fuck, uh, man. But anyway, they have... Uh, Nonagon Infinity, back to that point, is about... Uh, uh, Goddamn dog came back from the fucking yeah. dead, bro. It's driving me nuts. I'm sorry, everybody. We had, <laughs> we're gonna have better audio next time. We had to improvise with this mic. And yeah, yeah. Fucking dog. Official episode two is getting off to a great start. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. I don't know if this is gonna be episode two. I'm not sure. Okay, okay. We'll uh, figure out where this goes. Yeah, but anyway. Good riff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Sorry about that. God. Uh, it's it's, it's a. Uh, yeah, just drive me insane. All right. Um, yeah, but Nonagon Infinity is like a nine-song album that the ending of loops back into the beginning. Oh, hell yeah, dude. So, like, yeah. You can listen to the entire album on loop, and you get, like, a continuous experience. Yeah, it's sick. Like, But but anyway, I was talking about their heaviest one. They've got one called Infest the Rat's Nest. Oh, that sounds sick, too, bro. And it's, it's very much, like, think about the best version of Metallica that ever existed, like, the heaviest, thrashiest, but, like... Well, yeah, that's Mr. Bungle. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I think you... That album, I've got a... I've got two copies on vinyl. One of them is signed by the singer when we... When he met... We took Nathan to see them in Atlanta. Okay. When he was five. <clears throat> he got to meet the singer and shit. It was pretty cool. Got that to, sounds really cool. Got to get on the tour bus while the band was asleep. And you just sit. snuck onto the tour no, bus? No, no, no. The- we, we walked up in the t- and we were like, hey... I got my five year old. He's he legitimately was a fan. Like he would sing their songs in the shower and shit. Damn. And I, I, yeah, and like uh, he was like, hey, yeah, yeah. He goes, well, they're sleeping right now. Come back a little bit later. You'll probably get to meet them. Just King Gizzard. Yeah. Holy fuck, and, bro. That's and, cool. And so, uh, fuck that dog, dude. I'm gonna kill her for real. No, nah, no, nah, don't worry about uh, it. Just keep going. Anyway, uh, they let they let Nathan sit in the the like driver's seat of the bus and like 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 do like that and with the steering wheel and we took he got pictures. to pretend he was chauffeuring the yeah, banner that's yeah. sick bro and then he ended up getting a picture with the singer and stuff and we had a cool interaction but uh was he psyched on it yeah yeah dude he, what a what an awesomely humble thing to be psyched on yeah i've got a signed know? record over there that says like uh um i don't know exactly what it says but he put xoxo at the bottom love stew and stuff it was really cool why is he why is he putting the moves on your kid that's fucking <laughs> weird, man. no i'm just kidding <laughs> he's a cool guy he's a young he's younger than me i think he's about your age oh wow and they're kicking ass they've got like 25 albums out now oh yeah king gizzard but any, anyway so uh yeah man anything you wanted to yeah you know what I'll, while we're while we're on the subject of fucking heavy ass bands I want to I want to throw a shout out to an awesome band from my hometown yeah. that started in 2020, Melted Bodies, bro. 
Okay. You got to get out there and listen to some melted bodies. That's that's the homework <laughs> from tonight's podcast. All right. So what would you are they are they like what would you compare them to like a uh, like insane clown pussy? <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, they're kind of like I had they're kind of like BT Bam, but like punk as fuck. Uh, is no, like one no. way I would describe it, but they also they're kind of to me like the sound that they have. It kind of fills the void that was left behind by Mr. Bungle's original sound with like their yeah. first couple albums. Yeah, and uh, they just they have a really awesome way of taking a concept like shopping at a mall and making it sound heavy as fuck and also <laughs> dystopian. And yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah, it's just great music, man. Uh, they've got a song about a guy who's uh, who's uh, bored and doesn't know what to do with his day, so he goes out and kills a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Hell yeah, dude. And uh, uh, one just, of my favorites is about health insurance companies and how much they fucking suck, so. Well, for all the layman's out there, everyone who listens to this, BT Bam is Between the Buried and Me. <clears throat> That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout out Between the Buried and Me, who also yeah. rock a lot of cock. Oh, uh, yeah. They're pretty gay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As all things are on Odd Squad. Hell yeah. All right. I was... I was just looking in the news at uh, at this article. I guess the Pentagon was ch- tracking like a Chinese spy balloon, like over the U.S. Oh man! Just like <laughs> I'm just all I could imagine was like 180 days around the world or whatever yeah, the yeah. the fuck around the world in 80 days the Jackie Chan movie. <laughs> just a bunch of just a bunch of Jackie Chans in the little basket below. Just, yeah, they're just like little binoculars. Yeah, with binoculars like. I can't tell what they're doing down there. We might need to get closer. <laughs> <laughs> they're just fucking like dropping sandbags. <laughs> Why are they fucking with us like this? We all know about like, dude, TikTok is that's all they need. I know, man. Why use a balloon? <laughs> they don't need a bunch of Jackie Chans <laughs> with the binoculars. Dude. I'm just imagining like an army of drunken masters coming yeah. out, just like kicking ass left and right. They wouldn't even need guns, bro. So nudist. Nudists not only have to worry about Google taking the image of them at random, but also the fucking Jackie Chan's in the box. <laughs> <laughs> and posting it on TikTok. In the hot air balloon. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what I picture. It's a hot air balloon. <laughs> they just like slowly <laughs> land <laughs> in the middle of some field, just like, who am I? I'm going to my own boy, y'all. Just coming out like full force and just sprinting across this field. <laughs> Damn, who are they coming for? Uh, the fucking the Pentagon, bro. Oh shit! They're yeah. coming for uh, they're coming for fucking anti Chinese uh, like Hollywood stars. Dude, it's not like Biden would even know what hit them. They're coming after Shane Gillis, bro. That's what they're coming <laughs> after. Dude, he, oh, he, like he'd be they'd catch him twenty four beers in, he'd be fucking unstoppable. Dude, for real, he's just like pile driving like a, a row of like five yeah. Jackie Chans. Dude, <laughs> how many Jackie Chans do you think it takes to take down that big motherfucker? He's like a he's like a football player, literally. He played in a Division One school. Oh wow, what does that fucking mean? Uh, hey, it, sports baby. <laughs> it just <laughs> means that they were in the the big leagues. Oh wow! Uh, you know how like uh. It's the difference between like uh, Troy and like Auburn or Alabama. I thought they were on par in terms of the. No. No. They just have like. Is it, they're like the Hatfields and McCoys of the fucking. <laughs> well, it's the just, sports world. It has a lot to do with the strength of schedule and okay. like who you play. Like you know, like Troy plays other teams that you've never heard of. Like, okay. And then Alabama plays like the big dogs and yeah stuff like that. All right, well, that's cool, man. Yeah. That's fucking sick. Uh, so Shane Gillis did that. Who did yeah. he play for? I don't remember. <laughs> okay, cool. Flat out. It wasn't like a well-known school, but they were big enough that they like were in the biggest division or whatever. He has a bit... He has a, I'm not trying to ape his shit. Like, he has a bit about... Not a bit, but like he's talked about it exclu- like uh, extensively on podcasts. Okay, cool, cool, cool. About just in general about... The fact that he's like people refer to him as like the Forrest Gump of comedy <laughs> because he played for a Division One school of football. He was for a little bit, very short while, 
I think it was like a Catholic school and he didn't want to be there anymore or something. But oh, that's interesting. That makes sense for Shane Gillis for some reason. And it was also, I want to say, a military school, if I'm not fucking this up. So he technically is, he's like, he has this thing, he's like, I'm technically a decorated veteran who also played football, you know, this and that. <laughs> so, and there's other things that are weird about his life that just so happened to, you know, and he was on SNL. Well, you know what's funny is like, he was that's a guy in SNL. 2023 who is like on the track to becoming like a classic like 80s dad. You know, yeah, like but beer except with no ki- kids, but yeah, 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 yeah. Instead of like, instead of yelling at his kids to get away from the front of the TV, he's just like <laughs> doing coke and hookers. <laughs> I think he's a pretty cool. He's got a girlfriend and shit. So, uh, oh okay, he's, all right. He's a fucking killer comic though. Yeah, Jesus, yeah. I, I watched uh, on your recommendation. I watched live in Austin, and that was a that was a really good stand up yeah. special, bro. That had me laughing. Yeah. I I actually showed it to my girlfriend and she was like laughing as well. It was like nice. a really good time. Nice. Yeah, I yeah. wondered if you if you showed it to her. Uh, I've seen it like four times. It's really good. Yeah, I've seen it now like three times. Oh, yeah, I'll yeah. admit. Yeah, 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 and it's it's I I I bet spaced out probably a lot shorter. <laughs> Imagine being uh, SNL and being like, God damn it, because like yeah. they really let him go. Yeah, they, yeah, they should, but. That guy would have been. That guy really would have reinvigorated SNL. I yeah. think. Because like that's. I like that you took it in that direction because everybody else just goes straight to saying the other thing, which is best thing that ever happened to him. But you know what? I've heard his take on that, and he was like, "Fuck you! It was the worst day of my life." You know what I mean? Like yeah. you don't know what it feels like to call your parents who never gave a fuck about anything you've done in comedy. And now you say, I'm on SNL, and they're like, oh, we know what that is. That's big. Yeah. And then to have to turn around the next day and say, never mind. Well, was, yeah. was yeah. the worst day of his life. And it, like, so I'm not going to sit here and be like, it's great that that happened. But, I mean, what we could say is what you were going to say, like, that would have been crazy to explore. It would have been great for SNL, I think, in terms of, like, getting new audience members back and getting people to watch the show. Because I feel like... I mean, don't get me wrong, the kind of, like, era that I watched SNL a lot in was when I was in, like, middle school. Uh, and then it was pretty, yeah. you know, it was very politically driven even then. Uh, but, like, as, like, a middle school student, you're not nearly as, like, fucking brainwashed by all that kind of shit. So you're not, like... Yeah. <clears throat> you know, and I, I say this no matter what end of the spectrum you're on. Like, there are extremes on both sides, and, it, it you know, you want to avoid both. So, like... Uh, that, oh, that's my hot political take, you know, uh, anyway, so I enjoyed SNL a lot and like, I, 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 I found it really funny, but I, I've tried to watch, I've seen like clips from like recent years and yeah. it's like, bro, what is this Oof. show doing? They suck. Yeah. Yeah. They suck. It sucks. And, uh, yeah, I think I've having never a, been into it to be honest. Well, I mean, here's the thing, like. It used to be really good. Yeah. My, my mom Before used to have time. these. Yeah, yeah, exactly. My mom used to have these highlight uh, DVDs that were like they had like old ass ones on there, and they were they had me reeling, bro. This yeah. was at the same time that my mom was introducing me to a lot of like Mel Brooks stuff. Yeah, and like I was watching a lot of like uh, Leslie Nielsen. Yeah, 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 exactly. I love Leslie Nielsen movies. Man, Airplane is one of my favorite movies of all time, and I think it's one of the things that really like inspired me to like get into into comedy and like. Oh, yeah. Like comedy writing, I I remember after watching Airplane, I was writing sketches, uh, in like middle school and like <laughs> trying to think up like bits and stuff, and um, <clears throat> so that was like that was a pretty cool time in my life. Yeah, that movie's like a uh, fucking Mark Norman on steroids. Yeah, it's yeah. Like if, it's, if it's like if he wrote the every joke in the movie. <laughs> yeah, I, it's like it's a amazing the way that that movie just delivers like joke after joke after it's, joke. You'll too. miss them too, dude. Like yeah. that's why it's such a good rewatch movie cuz like I'll just be laughing at shit that I've never heard before. Yeah, it's the same thing with like Monty Python. Yeah. I I watched uh, Holy Grail again recently. It's been like probably over a decade since I watched Holy mm-hmm. Grail last. And uh it holds up, bro. I used to have this like really jaded thing about it because I was yeah. like, man, so many nerds just fucking quote it all the time. It's so annoying. But like when you separate yourself from that by like a couple of years and like you go back and rewatch it, it's just like, man, this this doesn't stop hitting. Yeah. Yeah. The comedy was pretty good back then. You had other shit like, uh, uh, what was it? Animal House? Or uh, what am I trying to think of? Animal House. Uh I mean, I that's one I didn't see, but like that's the or one. Or like the... Chevy Chase movies. Yeah. Like, have you ever seen National Fletch? Lampoon? Have I seen what? Fletch. 
No. Oh, that's a good one. I'll have to. I'll have to. Uh, give me. Give me like a spoiler-free plot summary of uh, Fletch. I want to say he plays like a. Uh, I have to look it up now because now I'm being <laughs> retarded about it. But I think he. <laughs> Hold on. I've seen it. Okay. It, yeah, he's like a. It says uh, he's a newspaper reporter being offered a large sum to off a cancer a cancerous millionaire. Oh wow! He's on the run, risking his job, finding clues when it's clear the man is healthy. It's pretty funny, dude. He plays like the basically detective character. That's great. And uh, I can see Chevy Chase in that role and like doing a yeah a fucking awesome job. <laughs> he he plays like that. But he's such a dick. From what you hear. Well, <laughs> yeah, but I mean... There's Rawhead Rex again. <laughs> there's Rawhead Rex again on your fucking other tab. Fuck. He's just saying hello, dude. Look at him, like, coming out there. I, maybe I we, maybe want we should, pizza! <laughs> we should get a screen grab of this just and yeah. chuck it on the Patreon so that people know what we're talking about on yeah, this episode. For sure. <laughs> well, I'll have to... I'll do it before we get to the episode when this re- releases. Okay, there we go. But, yeah. Um. <laughs> oh, I wanted to come back real quick to SNL and Shane Gillis. Have you thought, have you ever seen the comparison, or not comparison clips, but, uh, you know, people talking about it's ironic that he got canceled because of the Asian stuff, and SNL has had skits on there, be, albeit years ago, but not that long ago, that are fucking way worse. Well, I mean, they still do that kind of caricature stuff from time to time. It's I, like, mean, I mean, but like, yeah, like, you know, I don't know. It's It's wild. They're, they're fucking hypocrites, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's like... Uh, it's like that... It's that industry shit, you know? It's just... Yeah. It's, that's why you want to stay the fuck away from the industry. That's, yeah, that's what I them. think. Yeah, don't come knocking for us. We don't yeah. want it. Knock, knock. Open up the door. Nope. It's real. Nope. You stay the fuck out of here, bitch. <laughs> that's what I say. That's real. That's real. Uh, yeah, yeah. Odd Squad. We're going to stay independent. We're not We're not going to sign a no... F- that's right. You gotta pay these bills. I was gonna just talk mad <laughs> shit on a company, but like, no, let's not do that real quick. <laughs> Look at us being like, yeah, fuck corporates, Co- fuck corporations. We're we're not doing that shit. Oh uh, yeah, we're not gonna talk shit hey, on the di- corporations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Depends on the corporation. Taco Bell. Yeah. Okay. Well, Taco Bell makes me shit regularly, so you know it's like. <laughs> it makes me shit irregularly. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe it doesn't need Okay, to. I gotta say something about the Sensation Salad. Yeah? It made me shit like a motherfucker. <laughs> the next morning, after eating it... Oh, there is so much shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, I will say, I don't know if it was the Sensation Salad or the $20 worth of Taco Bell that I'd eaten earlier in the day uh, that really did uh, it, dude, so we'll... Don't, don't put it all <laughs> Salads are healthy, dude. And you got the grilled chicken against my advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He well, did. to be fair, you didn't fucking tell me until after I ordered the. Well, ordered I wasn't the thing, gonna so. be like, no, he wants it fried. You should have done I that, bro. You knew, dude. I, thought I thought you were gonna you be knew. a hero. They're not you... supposed to ask you which one, dude. They're Americans. They're Americans, dude. They're supposed to know you mean fried. Yeah, look yeah. At me. Do I look like I get grilled chicken? That's okay. That, but and neither do I. Yeah, in all well, fairness, you yeah, know. Whatever. But I do it. I do you. I would you fuck me. I would fuck me. I would fuck me so hard. I would, I would absolutely fucking breed me. Oh, man. We're not going to get copyright struck for that, are we? It's too good. It's too good. Hey, how do you feel about fake plants again? Did you say something about that? Fake plants? Yeah, inside the house. Inside the house? You said something about that. I think you did. Um, what I don't... Let me think about that one. What do I think of the fake plant? Yeah, I thought you were talking shit on a fake plant, and I was like, this motherfucker. Oh, no, what did I say? That they were gay. <laughs> oh, they are, but that's just because it's like, you know, real plants actually give you stuff you need. Yeah. And yeah. you can get you can get a little gay with real plants, too. You can sing to them. <laughs> you can sing stuff like, goodbye, horses. <laughs> Good night, my plants. <laughs> I love all of you. <laughs> Uh, oh enjoy my god my nitrous oxygen wait ha- wait. Uh, wait what is i don't even know what, what you know it's horrifying bro plants scream <laughs> plants scream when you cut them ah! yeah <laughs> now you got to listen to it with special my leg <laughs> my leg <clears throat> uh, but the, here's the thing the meme i saw that said that stipulates that you 
when you it's when you listen to it with special equipment. So how do we know that they didn't just devise a fucking machine to make it sound like plants are screaming when they release gas? Yeah. Like for that purpose, like listen, <laughs> listen here, vegans, <laughs> listen here, you heard nature just as much as those <sighs> goddamn meat eaters are. Yeah. It's not a it's not a solid argument. <clears throat> no, no, it and really I, isn't. And I eat meat, but I have. I have been a vegan at times. I'll be honest. I'm completely selfish when it comes to that stuff. I love gouging down on meat. I see videos from yeah. PETA of them hacking pigs apart and like, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like, I've seen all the documentaries. I've seen the worst shit you can imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just pile driving a fucking nail through a cow's skull. And you know what? Yeah. Every time it makes me hungry. I'm like, I can That's really go for up. a burger right now. I can't say I agree with that, but <laughs> I can not say that I have... And this is nothing funny about this, but I can say that I have spent years thinking about this and toiling over this. I mean, I was pretty activist about, I was pretty gay about veganism. Really? Yeah, I was really into it. <clears throat> uh, and uh, I had, an, I guess, a sort of an awakening of sorts that, and I don't want to talk about this too much because I know how vegans will take it. They'll, they would clip this and just be like, this guy's in denial or whatever. But for me... It's a personal choice that I came to, to the, I basically came to the, to the decision that my health and the way that uh, I consume food, it's like, it's kind of like a, it's, it really is like a survival of the fittest type thing. And um, I wish it wasn't made in a factory type setting. Yeah. But like, <clears throat> at, I've done the no meat thing and the no the no animal protein whatsoever thing, and my wife did it as well. And I know people are like, "Yeah, but you probably just say Oreos and shit." But no, we like tried to do it the right way, and still had a lot of issues. Oh wow, a lot of issues, and um, pretty much went away when we went back to a normal diet. Yeah, consuming so meat. That was when I was like, I just got to be wow a man out. about this and just be like. You know, it is what it is. It yeah. is what it is. It is where you're at. You didn't choose to be born a human being. That yeah. is where you're at on the food chain. It just yeah happened but to you. I will say this in in defense. Like, it feels pretty good for a while, especially fruititarian, fruititarian. You ever fruititarian? Oh yeah, there's people you that only do eat that. fruits. I I didn't. Ever... That sounds like a surefire way to have like green shit. <laughs> Just water shit. Just yeah, yeah. <laughs> just liquid. Yeah. Liquid shit. Just just dumping like a, like out. A Wendy's frosty. Oh yeah. It's been bro. like melted in the car. Yeah, absolutely. Um. Do you like hot cast, sick comedy, and gay hot dog recipes? Gay hot dog recipes. Gay- Subscribe to the Odd Squad Podcast Patreon for as little as one dollar. One dollar for early access to ad-free episodes and listen to these funky white boys get down with riffs bits and guests higher tiers get exclusive video content and merchandise show your friends and family your love of hot comedy today at patreon.com slash odd squad pod uh hey bud uh you're on the podcast right now not really yeah welcome welcome to odd squad say hi to say hi to ross What's up, Ross? What's up, RJ? How does he know my name? Because <laughs> it's on his fucking caller ID. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to back this up a little bit. We're going to make this work. Hell yeah, dude. Welcome. You're our first official guest. It's, it's a lot of pressure right now. <laughs> yeah, you feeling it? Yeah. Let me ask you something, RJ. Have you seen Rawhead Rex? Oh, you've seen it? Dude, we yeah. were dying. We're, you're going to love this episode. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we riff on Rawhead Rex quite a bit. Short story. Yeah, that's what he was saying. Yeah. Now, have you seen the movie, though? Yes. Okay, cool. Cool, yeah. All right, just wanted to clarify. Is, is, it, it, is it worth watching? Uh, <laughs> it's pretty schlocky, but you'll have a good time. Oh, they, hell yeah, dude. Does it have titties? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah, dude. That's like a real-ass dude I mean, movie. I mean, Rawhead Rex, the title itself is like a innuendo. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like Raw Dog Bob or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Raw Dog Bob. That sounds like a like a fucking character there. He's like, my name's Bob. All I do is Raw Dog. Yeah, I'm Buck and I'm here to fuck or whatever from Pill Bill. I have no skin left on my penis. <laughs> None whatsoever. I do so much Raw Dogging. Dude, you sound like fucking, that's like a Roiland bit. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, Ronald, I got no. You know, that Patreon tier. Woo! Oh yeah! Shout out! Hey, by the way, shout out RJ for helping us set up the Patreon and yeah, yeah, and being supportive and cool. Yeah, because Justin had it named some stupid shit <laughs> like real dogs, and I was like, raw dog, buddy. Raw dog. Shout out the raw dogs on the Patreon. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Holy yeah. shit, we'll have to throw Raw Dog Bob in there. <laughs> Raw Dog Bob is the is the uh, leader of the Raw Dog fan club. There we go. I don't know. RJ, will you take this will you take the title of Raw Dog Bob? Uh, <laughs> there's definitely a Raw Dog Bob out there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, but he won't come for you. Or maybe he will. Oh god. We gotta plug it's in my phone. for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> come one, come all. <laughs> oh, he's coming. Coming around the mountain. When he comes. It's like that, yeah, it's like that fucking Trump thing. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come. <laughs> Nobody comes better than I do. I'm the best at coming. It's true. It's true. You heard it here on Odd Squad Podcast. I come better than anyone else. I walked in here. I said, wow, he does come better than anyone else. (laughs) He comes so much better than anyone else. I came in and said, wow, he comes so much better than anyone else. (laughs) Shout out Shane Gillis. We just stole his bit, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) We were just talking about him earlier. RJ, you've seen Live in Austin. What do you think about it? Live in Austin. The Shane Gillis special that I sent you, where he talks about the Fox News dad and all that shit. Oh, yeah. That was fucking killer stand-up. Yeah. Fox News dad, that's a good dad. I walked in and said, wow, what a good dad. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, great. Too bad your mother's gay. RJ, yeah. RJ is a uh, very, he's like a really big, like, I would say up and coming, but he's been doing it for years uh, in the horror community. No way. He's got, yeah, he, he, he's the founder of a 30 plus thousand member group called Books of Horror. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah I remember you were telling me about that. Yeah. And uh, it's pretty sick. So, but don't you have a book coming out soon? Another one? Yeah. My first short story collection. Finally. Dude, I want to read. I actually am going to read that one. For why, why don't you plug the title for us? It's called Pieces of Me. By R.J. Rolls. Yeah. Hell yeah. It's coming out on February 17th. Dude. And he, Justin he, does have a small shout out in the back of it. Woo! Nice. Thanks, dude. <laughs> Along with uh, Mr. Jay-Z Foster and oh, Jay yeah. Sigler. The Jay-Z. Wow. And <laughs> Jay Sigler, shout out. Uh, because that motherfucker. Yeah, motherfucking Jay. JBS. <laughs> so if who, for those who don't know, real quick, J, me and Jay Sigler wrote a comedy book that's available everywhere, including Audible, uh, called Jerry's Book Sucks, The Book. And uh, we have a sequel that's much better, but we just have not released it yet. We just have not released it yet. Don't know why. It's going on three years. <laughs> It's so sick, too. It'll be out when it's out, <laughs> and we like that. That's, that's yeah, a good yeah. idea there. But anyway. But yeah, man, Pieces of Me. RJ writes some fucking fire short story fiction, like like get in and get out and fuck with your head type stuff. It's really cool. He writes the best horror books. I walked in and said, wow, what a good horror book. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be the whole rest Scared of the Scared the pants off me, I tell you. This guy... Nobody scared the pants off me the way RJ does. It's true. It's true. You can clip it. Take it to the bank. This guy, this guy writes good fucking horror fiction. Where's his Hollywood adaptation? I don't see one. When's it coming? Come on. <laughs> if it's coming, I, I can't do a Trump. That's going to be a bit. He's not easy to do, man. It's just like... My throat is so dry, though. He's like, really easy to do when he's yelling. But it's really hard to get him down when he's talking. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't have the easiest, most, you know, when he's just <laughs> normal talking. It's easy to get into the yelling and the screaming and all that stuff. Can I try that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Alright. Thanks. Whoa, what the fuck? Did you just raise an army of undead dogs, bro? <laughs> What's that, RJ? Uh, I'll ecology because it's, uh, I figured you was on Fuck Off Friday, and obviously you're on Fuck Off Friday. <laughs> no, dude, it's after work right now. It's after work hours right now. <laughs> just so everybody knows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely not. It really is. Off. It really is. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But... I'm gonna go because I'm about to order some Arby's. Hell yeah. Dude, somebody on Facebook was, was talking about, I've never even heard of Arby's. Somebody was making an Arby's reference and they're like, I've never heard of it. And I was like, get the fuck out of here. Dude, if you've never heard of Arby's. What do you, you live in Nova Scotia? <laughs> <laughs> Cambodia or something? What are you doing on Facebook yeah, if you never heard of no, Arby's? That'd be my China? question is like, are you an American? Yeah. Hey, before you go, what do you think about vegans? We were just talking about that before you call. Vegans? Yeah. Uh, aren't you a recovering vegan yourself? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, we talked about that. Dude. All yeah. right, one last question for you. The Pentagon caught a Chinese spy balloon <laughs> floating over the U.S., taking surveillance. What would you do if a hot air balloon dropped down and, like, 50 Jackie Chans <laughs> jumped out and just came running at you? <laughs> Naruto running. What? Hey, that's offensive, man. Naruto running Japanese. Oh, that's... my bad. <laughs> just, honestly, if it was Jack, 50 Jackie Chans, I would just curl up into a ball <laughs> and then be pummeled around like a, you know, like a human soccer ball. <laughs> Hell yeah, you would. But you, literally speaking of that, because uh, we want to take it back to Jay-Z Foster, I saw that headline and sent it to Jay Z because he's all up in the politics. Oh yeah, so I was yeah. Like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> we just you imagined a guy like shit. <laughs> we just imagined a guy like leaning over the side of it with fucking binoculars. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, what are they doing? I can't see sheet. <laughs> they have too many trees here in America. <laughs> Like that fucking Haji and the Turbans, too many tall trees. How do they, uh, how do they fucking spy on their Ar- own people with all the smog? Hold on. RJ, we'll let you go get your Arby's, dude. Thanks for calling. Yeah. Okay. Love you. We have the meats. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I there we go. That was RJ. Yeah. Give it up for RJ, everybody. Woo! Yeah, he's pretty prominent in the horror book community, which is a nerd thing, but it's cool. That is cool. I don't read many horror novels myself, but I do love a good H.P. Lovecraft. Yeah. There's a racist. Yeah, he's yeah he's an old-timey racist. You know what his cat's name was? I do know what his cat's <laughs> name was. It was a uh, Jerome. It was not good, but he did he did happen to love that cat a whole lot, so... Yeah, yeah. You know. I think it was just like, <laughs> that's one of those old time. I'm not going to justify it. It's not okay. I know that's like the first thing people say. It's just I was hoping that you hadn't heard of it because I was. Oh yeah, no, no. I'm, I don't know how I was gonna communicate it to you, but um, yeah. Yeah. So I just don't Google that, please. Don't Google that. Whatever you do. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, Cthulhu Mythos. Woo. Pretty uh, cool. Spawned a lot of cool shit. Yeah, man. Yeah, the man. Thing. We I talked mean, about the John Carpenter. Like, yeah. So many good. Especially old special effects movie makers. Well, yeah. Are you a fan of the uh, Stuart Gordon uh, Lovecraft movies? He's got uh, Reanimator from Beyond yeah, and yeah, Dagon. Yeah. Dagon is so much fun, dude. That I movie scarred that me. I know the story of Dagon, but I have not. Uh, the, so they, what they did was they basically took the shadow over Innsmouth and they just called it Dagon. Oh, okay. And they changed up the story. It's like modernized. All the Stuart Gordon movies are modernized. Yeah. Uh, versions of these stories. Because, you That's know, cool. he, he wrote them in the 20s, so everything yeah, like yeah. primitive. Yeah. Um, have you seen The Lighthouse? The Lighthouse was fucking awesome, it's a man. Good Probably my favorite piece. movie of 2019. Hold on, shout out Ro- Roger or Robert Ro- Eggers. Robert Eggers? Yeah, I thought that it was guy Roger rocks. Eggers. No, it's Robert. Robert Eggers, The Witch. The Witch and uh, The Northman, his most recent movie. I have not seen that one yet. It's an action movie, yeah, but yeah, yeah. like it's stri- it's basically like one of his horror movies but with an action edge. We might watch it tonight. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I'd recommend it, dude. It's okay. like uh Bjork described it as Iceland in drag and that's that's an extreme uh it's an extreme descriptor, but it works. It's like a, yeah. it's very, very theatrical. It's very cool. Lots of gorgeous fucking shots in that movie. Cool. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna keep sucking Robert Eggers. Yeah. Robert, but what's the one that's coming? Oh, the Nosferatu. 
Yeah. Yeah, that one's coming. Wait, is he directing a... Yeah, Black and White. Oh, dude. Fucking Willem Dafoe's playing Nosferatu. There's no way this is going to suck. I mean... But it's got a lot of good people in it. I can't remember. Uh, actually, we'll look it up since that's a thing. Oh, also, I love that he's appeared in every single one of that dude's movies since uh, The Lighthouse. Well, I mean, when you're a real one, dude. Like, well, you know, he, he provided me the opportunity to work with him, and uh, it was a good time. I, that's a terrible Willem Dafoe. Oh, oh God. <laughs> I can only ever do is like, Godspeed, Spider-Man! <laughs> Hell yeah. The hot Norman! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know a good li- I, I don't yeah I'm not even gonna attempt it because every time I have to say I can do a voice and then I I can do a good Pee Wee Herman do it man <laughs> what do you want me to say uh <laughs> I want you to do Pee Wee Herman in character after the incident like getting caught like well uh I mean I was talking to Dottie and Dottie was saying you know uh don't worry about it, Pee Wee. I mean, that is your name, Pee Wee, you know? <laughs> I don't know. That's terrible. Fuck, no, that was a good <laughs> bit. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> and I'm not very good at the speaking voice, but I can really pull off the. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. you can't. It's like <laughs> somebody being like, I can do a mean uh, so and so, and then they just make like a weird noise they made once. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? Exactly. <laughs> I don't know. Well, you know, uh, that's that's like uh, Arnold for most people. Well, yeah, we talked about. Yeah, that. Yeah, we did talk about that. But do you have any? Do you you want me to guess your impression? Do do you want to do the impre- this segment? Oh, oh, we're doing Are guess you, the impression. Yeah, do you have anything in the in the uh, in the chamber you want to show me? Do I? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you mean to tell me you've got a small dick? <laughs> Is that what's going on here? I mean, why don't you just kill yourself? <laughs> it sounds to me like the Seth problem. Seth MacFarlane. No, 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 no. Oh no. God. Okay. Damn. Come on. You was you you. Maybe I'm doing a bad job at it, or maybe you maybe you ears suck. But <laughs> come on, you should know who I'm doing here. It's it's not that hard. Oh man, he's a really popular guy. At least was ten years ago. Now he's gotten kind of gay. <laughs> I don't know, dude. You're right on the money here. <laughs> Am I? Yeah. Uh, John Mulaney? No. Fuck, dude. You're so far off now. Okay, I give up. I don't even know who the. That was Howard Stern. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've laughed because Corey, Corey told me you did a Howard Stern one time, and I said I wouldn't fucking know Howard Stern if he bit me in the ass. Oh, that's how I, I know what he looks like. He looks like a grandma with dark glasses on, but. Yeah, like, yeah. Cool um, hair and shit. Nah, dude. That's <laughs> funny. I get it now. I, yeah. I'm not saying it was bad. I'm just saying that I never fucked with Howard Stern for real. I, I, I've seen clips of him, and that's the only reason why. And, like, he's yeah. funny as hell, dude. There was one where, like, this guy was calling in, and he just pretended to be... I mean, maybe he was a real ser- serial killer or whatever. But Howard Stern's just like, and, uh, why don't you just go ahead and do the world a favor and kill yourself then? <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was the funniest shit. Just Mic like drop. When Howard Stern tells you to kill yourself, you have to do it. But, yeah. Uh, I don't know if that guy did, but I hope he did, because it's just like... Yeah, man. Yeah. You want the ultimate thrill, like, if you like killing, you should just... Anyways, we're we're not going to go there. Um, <laughs> so when, you, when you're doing these impressions, are you um, pulling lines that you know, or are you trying to do line? You're trying to avoid lines to make it harder? Uh, well, if I'm going to do guess the impression, I'm going to try and avoid a yeah, specific yeah, yeah, yeah. thing. Because I was yeah, about to just drop yeah. some line. Like, I don't know. Uh, I think that's what makes it so hard. Yeah. Yeah, it's... You're not bad at it. I just, uh, well, Howard Stern for me would never work. So you got anything else? Um, I hate to put you on the spot. I could try to do something, but, uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No respect. (laughs) A simple couple drives slowly through the mountainside. Little do they know, both of them are about to get sucked off. (laughs) Sucked off? Yeah. (laughs) Um, I'm not going to give it away by, like, giving you an obvious hint. Sure. But, but there would be theme music that comes with that. I'll, that's the hint i drop. Is this that guy from uh, un, uh, Unsolved Mysteries? No, no. It's uh, Rod Sterling, Twilight Zone. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, see, that? I just, like, I totally watched Are these that. obscure references? Yeah, they absolutely are. Ah, oh, God. I thought Twilight Zone was, like, everyone knew eh, that. Maybe, maybe that's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I... Um, let me... How about this one? Cut it out! <laughs> you know that one? 
No. Really? No. God, man. Uh, how about this one? Uh, Full House? I'm, I'm going to knock your teeth in. Oh. Uh, that could be one of two people. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, let's start with Matt Damon. No. Okay. Marky Mark? No. Okay. See, that's that was one of the two it could have been. But uh, Leo? No, I'm going for uh, Ryan Gosling. Oh, okay. Drive. Okay, yeah. You could have done... Uh, oh, that's a good movie. Yeah. It's a sick movie. Good soundtrack. It's got that hot chick in it. Yeah, I don't know about that. Don't, don't. Wait, are we talking about Blanche? Blanche was kind of hot in like a weird way. I don't way. remember her name in the movie, but she was also in The Great Gatsby. No, we're not talking... You're okay. talking about Carrie Mulligan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. She's hot. Carrie Mulligan looks too much like my cousin's mom. I, <laughs> I can't see... I can't see hot in that. All right. Um, <sighs> she was hot on a... I think I discovered her on Doctor Who. She was on Doctor Who? Yeah. What the fuck? Not very long. She was like a side character for like a two episode run or something. Wow. I used to watch a lot of Doctor Who because I used to be really gay, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> Just proves that it's a choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are just jokes, people. Comedy. 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 Just um, jokes. <laughs> that's fucking good. <laughs> I, I saw the Damn, episode. that got me harder than I got it. Than I thought it would. Fuck. <laughs> that's pretty sick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway. Yeah, no, drive kicks ass, dude. Um, all right, all right, all right. Uh, this is a. I'm gonna credit my cousin on three three man cold because he came up with this podcast. Uh, right. Plug plug three or go watch three man cold. Uh, that's another good podcast. Um, yeah. Shout out three man cold. Uh, yeah. Uh, so a man puts another man's penis inside his foreskin, and you think that of me? No, I am the one who docks. <laughs> oh God, that's a uh, that has to be. Uh, the guy who voices Lego Batman. No. Uh, Will Arnett. No, that was not Will okay, Arnett. Okay, hold on. It's the guy who voices Rorschach. No. Fuck. No. <laughs> that one actually should have been really obvious. I dropped like a really obvious hint on that one, so I thought that would Do give the it away. obvious hint again? I am the one who docks. <laughs> it's, uh, I am the one who knocks. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought that was, uh, from, uh... It's from Breaking Bad. Oh. That wouldn't be Will Arnett. Will Arnett's like, Will I, Arnett's more like, I don't do tricks. A trick is what a whore does for money. <laughs> or candy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, he did that Lego show. Did you yeah, see that? Well, did you see him at fucking Minecon? <laughs> no. He did like a musical number with some lady. I have no clue he who she fucking like is. He seems like a pretty cool dude, actually. Well, he is. I mean, that's why it's cool that he went to Minecon is because his kid's really into fucking Minecraft. Yeah. And they like play together. So yeah. I was like, that's a sweet dad moment. But it's weird because he had this musical number and there's a point where he just randomly goes like, I'm no longer a fool. <laughs> and you're like, what the fuck is this? Like, wow. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Will Arnett. Oh, man. I can't believe you didn't get my full house reference. Which one? Cut it out. It's Uncle Joey. Oh, yeah. No, man. Uh, I haven't seen, I've seen full house a whole lot. I don't know. I don't... I think John Stamos gave me weird uh, creeper energy, so, like, I, like, managed to erase yeah. him from my memory of full house. <laughs> he had I that... I have a happen to predictability. Oh, my God. The, <laughs> that's a riff that they start on the first episode of Three Man Cult. <laughs> so it's just oh, like really? so weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? <laughs> that might have been in my psyche because I did start that episode, I, and I didn't turn it off because I hated it. I was just was at work. But yeah, I, yeah, but yeah. I did hear that part. You're right. <laughs> but <laughs> maybe fuck. that's why I did this poll from Full House because I don't watch that shit. You know, and I and I just I name dropped Three Man Cult, so it's like yeah, fuck. you you did something with my brain there. You yeah, some fucking mind some freak. some autistic associated oh my memory God, shit. I'm not going to keep talking about Shane. Matt and Shane, but fuck, dude, did you watch that episode with the mentalism guy on there? I was, well, I didn't finish it, but I got like three quarters of the way yeah, through it, maybe. Some of like, that shit was wild. Yeah. Like, yeah. He does this one at the end. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but uh, shout out to that pod, dude. It was fucking crazy. It, I almost feel like they planned it all, but it. it well, I, they started with that card shit, and like, I really wanted to know where that went, so I need to finish that episode. Yeah, yeah. All right. I yeah. wish I had watched it so we could riff on it more, but uh, yeah. yeah. Man. Dude, uh, not to do more magician riffs, but it's just like <laughs> a magician just makes dude's wife's disappear, and that's his like gimmick. <laughs> just gone. They're <laughs> just like teleported magically to some fucking field in Ohio. <laughs> well, you know, that's the problem with society these days. They treat the women 
like cattle, you know, <laughs> and the rap music and the, and the culture. It really devalues, you know, the women. <laughs> and it gets to the point where it's like, what is a woman? A woman? What does it even mean to be? <laughs> what does it mean to be anything in a, in a field in what state did you say? Ohio. Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, the thing with Ohio is it's, it's a very complicated state. You know, you have a lot of real estate that's not being taken up by, by many people. They get bored out there. And that's when the narcotics come in. You see, we have to solve this problem oh, from a... <laughs> it's too good, dude. <laughs> Shout out to Jordan Peterson, man. He's a wild dude. He's a wild bull. The solution is we need to eliminate Ohio whites. <laughs> that is the solution. Just nuke dude. the whole state. <laughs> Jay-Z Foster's an Ohio white. Oh, God. I, I know a friend who's an Ohio white as well, but yeah. he's like begrudging about it. Have you ever been up there? No, dude. I, I went up there. Maybe um, once. For, maybe uh, once. To like the Dayton, Cincinnati area. It was nice. It was white people shit. Were you up there for NASCAR? No, I went, I went up there for to, as a author at a convention. Oh, cool. What convention? Well, his mom uh, is actually a famous romance writer called Lori Foster. No fucking way. Yeah. And I mean, you can walk into any public. I love her books, man. <laughs> I know. I beat off here. nightly to them. They always have the really sexy dudes on the cover. Yeah. Like, but well, they, that's why I gravitate towards it's, them. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a sore subject between him and I, sort of, but but uh, he, he won't hear this. <laughs> no, I, I love the dude to death, but his mom, seriously, uh, um, is very successful, and she has a, a convention up there called R-A-G-T, otherwise known as Reader Author Get Together. That's cute. And they, yeah, they, <laughs> they rent out like a huge hotel in Cincinnati. Yeah. And basically, uh, the authors are on one floor and, you know, the readers are on other floors, so you don't run into them in the halls too much, but you have to wear a name tag with a lanyard that, w- at Do you have to times. get special permission to go from one floor to the other? Uh, not really, but we did travel together at all times, because, okay. like, if you, dude... There were so many, especially women there, because they're there for for the oh hell romance. yeah for the romance books. But it's not all romance. It's just that it just so happens that the that's the, the biggest turnout. Well, the organizer of it all is Lori Foster. Oh, but they still have like they had me and him doing the horror, yeah. and I had some I have comedy shit too. And um, but anyway, it was I've never felt more like a fucking celebrity in my whole life. It was insane. That is cool. Because when you walk down the hall, like, they give everybody a book when they get there, and it has a page with everybody's face on it. Okay. And so it's like they're collecting Pokemon cards. Yeah, when yeah. When you're walking Getting down the hall signatures. trying to, like, go take a piss. Yeah. They're like, hey, 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 Justin. And, you're like, they, because you're wearing wow. a yellow lanyard. Oh, they rec- yeah. And it okay. signifies, yeah, it's not that I'm that famous. It's that you're wearing the fucking yellow lanyard. So they're just trying to cash in. Yeah, I did an interview with Lori. I forgot about that. It's on YouTube somewhere. Shout out Justin Woodward YouTube. Yeah, but anyway, not for that <laughs> book stuff. No, it was fun, and I was very grateful to be there. It was super cool. Uh, feeling like a celeb for a weekend. Yeah, yeah. I, I can imagine, <laughs> man. I I, uh, I remember I used to want to draw comic books. Um, I Did I already talk about this on an no. episode of the pod? Okay. Well, maybe. I don't know. Uh, cause I draw, you know, I, yeah. yeah, so I, um, I used to have like, and, and the funniest thing is that what, cause like, I'm not really a fan of like cape shit, super, like I went through a phase when I was like a toddler where I really liked Batman and Superman, but then beyond that superhero stuff didn't really interest me. But you know what yeah. I did really fucking like was uh spawn man. Spawn was kick ass. Cause it was like, oh, he's like a superhero, but he's like a badass superhero and he's like from hell and yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's some sick ass monsters and stuff in it. And Todd McFarlane's art is like, I mean, this is gay to talk about, but <laughs> no, it's like Todd McFarlane's art is what got me into like comic books. Cause it's like, I, I, I guess I had cool parents. So like I got to grow up watching like alien predator, Terminator, Robocop, shit like yeah, that. Yeah. So of course I was collecting like McFarlane toys at like a young age. And that, that just like got me into Todd McFarlane's art, which I realized like, Oh, there's like a whole comic book for spawn and stuff. You yeah. know, a little, cause I was a kid and, uh, and I got into this deep rabbit hole and it just really made me want to draw got me into art like hardcore and i used to want to make comic books i i had like a soft little publishing when i was like 15 
or yeah. 16. I I did like a 50 print run of the of a comic book I made. And we it should was... do an Odd Squad limited release. Oh, that'd be cool. You because know what? We could link up, dude. I've wanted to. I've wanted to do. Um, I wanted to, because we did that. Jer- Jerry's book sucks. The book, and it was very like the cover's very colorful and silly and wild and whimsical. And so we were gonna do. Uh, just for example, we were thinking about doing Jerry's book sucks or Jerry's book stinks the book for okay. kids. Yeah, and it was gonna be a kid friendly version of the story. Animated, oh, that's cool. Or not animated, but you know, with drawn yeah. pictures. But we could do like some some wild shit for the odds. Oh yeah. Boys. <laughs> yeah. That would be really fun. But yeah, we could probably come up with something. We'll, we'll brainstorm it. But yeah, man. I think it's, uh, I think it's time to, for a uh, plugs. Oh shit. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, well, we've got a show coming up within the next couple of weeks, February 16th. I think when this, I think when this launches, uh, we, that show is coming up this week. Oh wow. Uh, on February 16th. Yeah. And so that's going to be at uh, Jake's Bar and Grill in Dothan. Um, the uh, you can find it online if you don't know where that's at. It's a pretty prominent bar in Dothan. Uh, we've been trying to get a show organized there for a while, so it, we're really excited about that one. Um, they uh, got they uh, got me and you. They got me and you at the end. Yeah, yeah, the Odd lineup. Squad. Hell yeah, we're I'm pre closing for you, which is going to be a lot of fun. Be I'm sick. I'm nervous about it. I won't lie, uh, but yeah. I've got some. I, Based on what you said, I've got some good material written up. I'm excited to bring it out and well, you know have have jokes ready yeah, and like yeah. all that stuff. Uh, yeah, get your uh, just wear your uh, your training underwear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll well, have my depends on. <laughs> um, let me pull up the flyer. I'm, I'm this is so unprofessional, but whatever. We're gonna pull up the flyer and shout out everybody on that show. Um, and uh, because I'm yeah, I'm excited about it. I think we we're, it's a Thursday night. You know, but it's a bar show. Uh, It should be a pretty sweet turnout. Um, It should be a damn good show. So let me look at, there's there's a post here somewhere. We'll go to Corey's page because he's always going to have the latest and greatest on there. All right. (laughs) Wow, dude. Well, they got on the flyer here. They got Corey as host. They got Jason L., Will Marshall, Carmen Bennett, yours truly, Justin Woodward, and I'm appearing as a special guest, so I won't yeah. be on the flyer, but I'll be there. Ross is going to be there, and uh, somebody else, that's what I was looking for. I'm trying to figure out who else is the other special guest that's going to be there. But you know what? Just come to the show and find out. You know? Yeah. But yeah. Uh, Would that be Spud Richie Aldridge? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, yeah. Mr. Spud. Uh, yeah. Awesome. We figured it Thank out. You. <laughs> well, I was like Will Marshall too, but he's already uh, yeah, and he's I think on, I yeah. believe I believe Jimbo is is on it too. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, which by the way, we still got to get him on here. Yeah, he's yeah. expressed a lot of interest. But um oh, and that leads me right into my next thing. He was our first patron, which was um shout out to the show March 8th. March 8th. At yeah. Happy Times. We already listed all the people on it and April 1st at Harlow's is the big one. Um, yeah. They're all big shows, though. I mean, I want people to come to each one. Yeah, please really come support. out. Uh, the one at Jake's uh, Bar and Grill is free attendance. Uh, yeah, they that, just that's want... correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah, 21 and up, no charge. Uh, yeah. So come out, have a couple drinks, let's have some fun. Uh, no starting fights and uh, no people named John. Yeah, no pachycephalosaurus is allowed. <laughs> That's right. Other dinosaurs, you can come fuck with us, but... Oh, I want to touch on something with you real quick before we close <laughs> it out, because <laughs> <laughs> listening back to these episodes and editing, um, I realized that I owe you an apology of sorts, because, um, or maybe you're just flat out retarded, but... Uh, <laughs> So when I was telling you that story, I realized that you 100% misunderstood what he actually did. Yeah. <laughs> Listening back, it's because you keep saying stuff about his head and his skull and everything. Yeah. And so I probably described it wrong to you. Um, he did not hit the doorway, the door frame with his head. He just kept like Naruto running through the doorway and being like, "Get out of the doorway!" Like uh, really aggressively. That fucking that disappoints me. Yeah, sorry about Here that. Here I was thinking he was like, <laughs> like wild. Yeah, wild yeah. I thought he was going way the more door frame. Wow. I realized that on the listen back, like, oh, we were talking past each other like a bunch, and then even when we have Corey on, which I believe actually comes out next week, Corey Bigby. Um, I mean, I realized that too. I mean, I was there for that. He passed between me and mm-hmm. Corey a whole fuck ton. That's yeah. hilarious. Here I am, like totally. It's funny, dude. Uh, <laughs> I thought this guy was going on like 
re kid in yeah, school yeah, yeah. like levels, <laughs> dude. Like, damn. No, nah, dude, he's. You know what? He might not be that bad of a dude. He might have just been having a bad night. We're just like shitting on him <laughs> for like four episodes. <laughs> It's, a, it's pretty funny. I mean, we may have to have a Pachycephalosaurus t-shirt at some point. Dude, yeah, that'd, that'd be dope. Let us know what you think about it. Um, <clears throat> and I think we're going to say, uh, for now, Odd Squad out. Odd Squad out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh. Don't get it twisted. This rap shit is mine. X go give it to ya. Fuck way for you to get it on your own. X go deliver to ya. Knock knock, open up the door, it's real. With the non-stop pop up and stay in the still. So hard getting busy with it. But I got such a good heart that I make a motherfucker wonder if he did. Damn right, and I do it again. I am like so I got to win. Break bread with the enemy. No matter how many cats I break bread with, I break who you send me. You motherfuckers never wanna know but your life saved. And that's on a life day I'm getting down, down Like a nigga said freeze But hope be the one that ended up on his knees Bitch, please But the only thing you can't steal But came out to play Stay out my way Motherfucker We gonna rock We gonna roll